And there, just moments ago, the president talking briefly with some reporters in the White House. It was during a meeting with former Secretary of State Henry Kissinger. You could see reporters there at the end trying to ask the president whether he still has confidence in his own Secretary of State, Rex Tillerson. The president said that he did not mean to undercut the Secretary of State with recent comments uh, about, about Tillerson. There's been a lot of rumors about ongoing tensions between the two men. The president also took taking a lot of time to talk about upcoming health care legislation and proposals that he's planning to announce. Not a lot of specifics, but he clearly still thinking about ways to move on health care. I'm Mary Alice Parks in ABC's Washington Bureau, and I want to bring in my colleague, Catherine Falders, who's there at the White House. Catherine, you know, the president is supposed to have lunch today with Secretary of State Tillerson and the Secretary of Defense, James Mattis. I mean, these two men clearly talking around each other in the press. Is, is this going to be a rather awkward lunch? <laughs> you know, I could imagine that it's going to be a rather awkward lunch. Now, press, um, we're not allowed into that meeting. There's not going to be a pool spray, as you just saw with the president uh, before. Um, Perhaps maybe for that little uh, awkward awkwardness that may happen there, but with those with those high Q comments, it's it's pretty fascinating. I mean, we think back to um, and you know we've talked about this the the moron comments that have been reported that Secretary Tillerson uh, reportedly called um, the president a moron. Um, he. Uh, the president has dismissed that, obviously, as um, fake news. But what's fascinating about this IQ comment this morning is he says, I think it's fake news. But if he did that, you know, he's leaving um, some room open for that, saying, you know, I guess we'll have to uh, compare uh, IQ tests there. Now, he's almost asked uh, pretty much regularly at this point, as you mentioned, we've um, reported that there has been uh, tensions between uh, Tillerson and the president. Um, and he's almost asked regularly at this point if he still has confidence in him. Today, he said yes. Um, but Mary Alice, I mean, I think you're you're right about that about that lunch that they're going to be having today it's going to be fascinating to see what comes out of that and if they are uh, still on the same page and one more feud that has been significantly more public i mean really uh, now at the level of absolute name calling the president and the very senior republican senator bob corker you know, people were talking, reporters were asking the president about some of Corker's recent comments, too. You know, Corker is the chair of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee. And so this week, when he said that he was worried the president was leading the country toward World War III, it really set off alarm bells here in Washington and around the world because we're talking about a senator who would be uh, sort of in the know, who's talking to diplomats every single day in his position there in the Senate. You heard the president there pushing back against Corker's comments, saying that he does not believe that. Obviously, he's leading the country into World War III, saying he thought that the that the country was on the wrong path now. But I was struck this morning. I mean, the president, again, <laughs> taking to Twitter, again, striking back against Corker. He has a new nickname for the senator. <laughs> well he does, and that new nickname is Little Bob Corker. There's somebody else who he calls Little, as we know, is Marco Rubio. This is now um, number two with that nickname. L I D D L E is how he um, spelled that one. Um, but he, so, so how do you pronounce that, Catherine? Little, <laughs> little, little. I'm going with Little, <laughs> Little Marco, Little Bob Corker. I mean, you know, we have the. The whole thing over here, Mary Alice. But it, yeah, he, when he tweeted this morning, I'm fascinated by this tweet. When he said he, he referred to the New York Times as a failing New York Times, he said they set um, Bob Corker up uh, by recording his conversation. And I, I, I don't know about you, but I'm not quite sure what the president has to gain from this tweet here because Corker, as we know, has been um, publicly. Um, coming out against the president. He knew the conversation was on the record. Um, we know that the, the New York Times reporter said that one of um, Corker's aides was recording uh, the phone call, was recording the interview. So the president is essentially implying that, you know, if if Corker knew that this was on the record, which we know he did, um, then he, you know, would have been more honest, right? So another very public feud here in the White House. And, you know, we're not getting any, indi any indication from folks over here that the president's going to let up on this. And in fact, he probably still wants to fuel um, the conversation. And, and Mary Alice, something you can speak to uh, a little bit here is that it, Corker is a significant vote, especially on tax reform. The president was asked in that spray um, if, if he thinks that this feud Feud, this ongoing feud with Corker, what, what affects tax reform? And he said, I don't think so, but uh, what do you make of that? 
I mean, I, I frankly think the president might be wrong here. I mean, we're talking about a very senior Republican senator who has said in the past that he is absolutely unwilling to vote for any tax package that could increase the federal deficit. I mean, this is someone that people on Capitol Hill really respect, who's very careful with his words. So when he took to Twitter, basically calling the president a child over the weekend, all of these comments about, about the fact that he believes that people close to the president are keeping the country from devolving into absolute chaos. I mean, he really struck a nerve with folks in Washington. And it's been interesting to watch how many of his colleagues haven't, uh, haven't disagreed. It wasn't like Republicans <laughs> came out and started dismissing Senator Corker or saying, you know, we don't listen to him very much. They've been very quiet. And if anything, they've put out statements saying that, that he's a friend and he's a trusted colleague. Uh, so we are just seeing more and more absolute division between this president and members of his own party, very senior members of his own party on Capitol Hill. And the idea that that would not in some way get in, get in the way of passing big legislative items, passing tax reform, I mean, that's, that's just absurd. I mean, it is very, very hard to do these big ticket projects without everyone working together. And uh, I'm trying to think of what else is coming up today. I mean, it's a busy day for you guys there at the White House. The, <laughs> the Penguins are also going to be at the White House. And that's another big political topic that the, this president has been weighing into, you know, time and time again and again this morning, tweeting about the NFL, saying that maybe they should read can look at how the NFL gets tax breaks because of this controversy with uh, with players not standing for the national anthem. You know, I was struck over this morning how many people online were surprised the president was tweeting on that topic, sports again, athletes again, but not, for instance, tweeting on deadly wildfires in California, not, for instance, tweeting on North Korea. Are, are, what's the what's the topic? What's the mood there at the White House about uh, a big sports team coming? Are people expecting that the president's going to use this as another opportunity to to talk about athletes and athletes' respect or disrespect for the flag? Uh, yeah, you know, I think he hasn't made this the Penguins visit political quite yet today. Um, he has been tweeting about the NFL earlier today um, and tax breaks. And uh, frankly, the mood inside the White House, Mary Alice, is that, you know, they, the, his aides want him to continue talking about um, the NFL and the flag and the national anthem. You've seen he hasn't let up on that really in, in all of two weeks. So you take this Penguins uh, visit, for example. Um, you think about when the Patriots also visited a, a few months back and, and its players didn't come to that as well. There was no mention of that in his public remarks. Um, um, I would, you know, tend to believe that he would try not to make this uh, event political, but I don't know. I think it's hard to imagine. I think he'll still, he, he could possibly, that's the question, uh, wade into uh, wade into the NFL debate and mention it um, when the Penguins are here later today. So I think it's uh, to be determined, but I think it does open up that chance um, for him to weigh in on, on something he frankly doesn't want to stop talking about. Absolutely. So all of these conversations, these questions about his relationship with Senate Republicans, his relationship with his own cabinet, Secretary of State Rex Tillerson, where the president sees this conversation going with sports and the NFL. I'm sure all of those topics will come up today during the White House briefing uh, in just a few hours. And I think again at that event, uh, perhaps again at that event with the president and the Penguins uh, later this afternoon. We'll be taking all of that live here on ABC News. Be sure to watch it. We'll be breaking Breaking down the White House briefing like we do every time with the briefing room. Be sure to watch. I'm Mary Alice Parks, joined by my colleague Catherine Falders there at the White House. Thanks so much.